In today's video, I have a few things I want to share with you. First of all, I'm going to show you how I go about to get our house relatively clean in the shortest amount of time possible. This is the sort of cleaning I do when I have a really crazy week, busy week, and maybe we have company coming over the weekend, and I just want it to look at least half decent. It doesn't have to be you know, every little corner cleaned out, but it's amazing how little you really have to do to just make it look good. So I'll show you my process on that. I'm sure many of you guys know this already, but sometimes it's inspiring to see how other people do it. And the second thing I wanna show you is a quick and easy meal idea that you could also use if you're getting company and need some last minute ideas. Uh, this is something that won't take long, but yet it's gonna feel like a pretty decent meal, I think. So let's get right into it. Here in the living room, I'll just be doing a quick sweep and then straightening up the cushions, taking the lint roller over some surfaces, probably use my dusting mitt and just go over the end table and some of the other surfaces in here. And the reason the mantle is bare is because I took all the fall decorations down last week, um, kind of getting ready for Christmas. And it's just a little bit early for me to put up Christmas decorations, but probably coming soon. I do have my trusty Dyson sweeper. I just recently bought a new battery for it. I think I've had it for maybe three or four years, and this is the first time that I've gotten a new battery. So I guess they do wear out, of course, eventually, but I thought it did last a good long time. But in the end here with my old battery, I, was, I wasn't even able to sweep my the full kitchen floor without having the battery dead. I'll have a Dyson link down below in the description box in case you're looking for a sweeper like this, but definitely a really handy tool to have in the house. As I'm starting my cleaning, it's presently almost 2.30, and my goal is to be finished in an hour. I know that's not very long, but uh, we'll see how much we can get done. If Twinkle is here in the living room, he's pretty much in this one spot, which I'm really thankful for. Um, I do have some Turkish towels that I switch out, other towels that we just use for him. For the kitchen, it's basically just sweeping and dusting, and then there's always dishes to wash. I don't have a dishwasher, so I wash everything by hand. And as I'm washing the dishes, have water fixed anyway, I'll just take my dish rag and go over the fridge and the microwave and just any surfaces out here.
course today I'm taking some shortcuts even in here. Uh, normally I would maybe fix some water and soap and the vanity and just scrub all the surfaces, um, including you know the bathtub and maybe even the shower. Although, for me, I actually like to clean the shower while I'm showering. I know it sounds weird, but if I'm in there anyway, um, getting all wet, you know, I might as well um, just clean it, whereas trying to, you know, stay dry and reach in and get every little corner, um, it's just so much easier. Here I'm just using a kitchen, a Norwex kitchen cloth, uh, dampening it, and then using the cleaning paste. I've talked about this before, but I love the smell of cleaning paste. I know it's intended to, um, you know, it says on the, the container, it cleans, polishes, and protects all in one application, and it's also kind of intended to remove tough stains. But being that I just love the smell of it, I just think it really freshens things up. You kind of want to watch so you don't get too much on your cloth because it can leave streaks and you might want to test on you know certain surfaces, but I've used it often enough like I kind of dare to use it anywhere. But I'm just going over the vanity and any surfaces in here, basically just dusting, but maybe just a little more than you know just a damp uh, dusting mitt. Here I have a bucket and I want to put our soap ends in here, uh, be a little more organized here on the vanity. Uh, we of course get a lot of soap ends from making soap and we do sell some on the Etsy shop. They usually don't last very long but we kind of want them to be a certain thickness to sell and these are just a tad too thin so we end up using them which works out great. I did go over my goal of being finished by 3.30, but it's fine. I have this habit of setting goals that are too high, especially when it comes to time. Things always tend to take longer than you think. It's always nice to freshen up a room with maybe new flowers or, in this case, leaves. From the outside, I always like to bring the outside in. In this case, I'm using some Japanese maple twigs. I'm also still burning my pumpkin souffle candle along with the autumn leaves in the living room. I think those two combined just smell so good. It just definitely smells like fall in here. Such a good feeling to have a somewhat clean house. I feel like I got most of the main cleaning done. I'm just definitely spruced things up in here. I have this Sloppy Joe recipe that I just love. It's out of this cookbook that I got when we were first married. Um, it's been a number of years and it's pretty battered, but I still use some of the recipes in it. It's really simple to make. You just brown your hamburger, oats, salt, pepper, and onions together. Today I'm using my rather large kettle, probably overshooting just a bit, but I like if I cook, if I don't have to worry about uh, things, you know, splashing out. As I'm waiting for my hamburger to brown, I'll go ahead and get all of my other ingredients together that I need. I missed getting a video of this. I thought I had my camera going and it actually wasn't, but after the hamburger was browned, I sprinkled some flour over the top, kind of mixed that in, and then I added the rest of the ingredients. And now I'm just gonna simmer it a bit to blend the flavors. Something we really like that goes well with Sloppy Joe sandwiches are the seasoned sweet potatoes. They're really simple to make. Uh, you just melt some butter and then add some seasonings. You peel your sweet potatoes and cut them into strips, kind of like french fries, and then you pour your butter mixture over them, mixing them together until everything's coated, and then you put them on a baking sheet and bake them for about 20 minutes. There's also a dip that consists of Miracle Whip or mayonnaise and a ketchup uh, mixed together. I 
plan to make homemade buns for the sloppy joe sandwiches now you could totally go out and buy them it would save you some time but i have the ingredients on hand and i have a really simple recipe so i'm going to go ahead and just make them and i will share all of these recipes down below in the description box of anything that i'm making today when preparing a meal i like to think you know a main dish and then maybe a side dish in this case, the main dish would be the sloppy joe sandwiches and then the sweet potato fries for the side dish. And I plan to fix a salad to go with this meal. And then for the dessert, I always like to think maybe something kind of fruity and also something baked. Now, I don't always get this done for us here at home. Don't think I'm this perfect cook that you know, has everything prepared to perfection with all these little side dishes, but this is just an idea for a meal. I mean, I like to try to do that, but I don't always get it done. But if I do invite people, I would normally go with that. I'm definitely keeping it somewhat simple with just having, you know, sandwiches. But for dessert, um, I think my fruit is gonna be a very simple mixture. Uh, one of my friends had actually fixed this one time for a youth event. And I thought it was such a good idea, especially for this time of the year. I think the fruit is not quite like it is, you know, during the spring and summer months. But some of the fruit that isn't too bad right now as far as, you know, tasting sweet and ripe are grapes, uh, pineapples, oranges. So that's going to be the fruit dish. Again, really simple. I'm not making a glaze or anything to go with it. Uh, just the plain fruit. You could sprinkle a little sugar or something over it if you'd want to. But to me, it's sweet enough. I don't think it's necessary. And then for my baked good, I plan to bake a Texas sheet cake. I don't know, are you guys familiar with that or not? But here in our community, that's really a thing. And again, it might be elsewhere, I'm not sure, but that's what I'm making here. It's one of the boys' favorite cakes. Um, I love it too, because I like chocolate. It is a relatively simple cake, although I've had issues in the past with my frosting not turning out the best. I always feel like I do it the same. Sometimes it'll turn out and sometimes it won't. So I'm never sure like what I'm doing wrong, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Uh, it is really worth it. Like it's a really tasty cake. I didn't get a video of me making this frosting, but of all things, this is actually the second try. The first one didn't turn out again. The only thing I could think of that I may have done differently was the first one, instead of just bringing my ingredients to a boil and then removing it from the heat, I actually let it boil a bit and then it didn't want to thicken for me after that. So there's a chance that that may be the problem. If you do end up making this frosting, don't boil it, just bring it you know, to a boil and then remove it from the heat before adding the rest of the ingredients. And this will make more sense on the recipe. We always like to have this cake with some milk. Here Ephraim is enjoying a piece. The last dish I'm showing in this video is a salad. And you could, of course, add any salad ingredients, whatever you prefer. In this case, I'm just using lettuce, uh, mushrooms, radishes, peppers, a little bit of bacon, tomatoes, and I have croutons and cheese. The salad dressing consists of only five ingredients and there's actually another version I've showed you guys before that I use at times is just mixing mayo, honey, and vinegar. That would definitely be a healthier option. You wouldn't be using your cane sugar. Uh, but once in a while I'll make this one. I know at home we always made this one and it was it's always good. So now we have all of our food. Again, nothing too complicated, but just a, a decent meal. I hope you guys were able to glean something from this video, whether it was just a few tips maybe or motivation. We all need that sometimes, right? 
Before ending here, I wanted to quickly show you a few products we have on the Etsy shop, something I keep forgetting to show you guys. I talked a little bit about it earlier this summer, some pretty fabric that I picked up at Addie's and we ended up making some cute little white valances with it. So maybe you're looking for a fresh new valance for your window, check those out. They do come in just one size, but remember if you have a really you know, wide window where you need more than one, maybe two or three valances, you can always hide the splits and the folds of the valance. I thought this fabric looked really pretty and country. We do still have some fall candles available. Make sure to check those out. We normally discontinue them. Uh, in November, we also have this really pretty beehive pillow cover. Only have a limited amount, but I thought this fabric was so pretty when I saw it. I just had to turn it into pillows. These pillow covers measure 20 inches. We also have a few black ones. This is a really nice soft fabric. It's kind of hard to tell in the video, but they're also 20 inches. I thought they look kind of cute together. As always, I hope your day is going great. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.